Hey guys, I'm sure most of you have been expecting this video round about now. Today I am of course going to be giving my Ubuntu 17.10 review. So I've been trying it out on my Entraware laptop since the day of its release uh, and I'm going to be talking about my experiences. But just before I get into my sort of user case scenario, uh, I should point out that interestingly enough, when I came to recording the screen cap for this, I had to switch away from Wayland and across to Exorg because Wayland, well, it's still working on uh, doing things like screen cap it would seem but I'm using simple screen recorder which was available in the Ubuntu repositories um, and uh, yeah I had to record through Exorg however other than that um, I've actually had zero problems whatsoever using Wayland and I've had zero issues with screen tearing whereas with like uh, older uh, window managers and display uh, and, and under Exorg I have had some issues with screen tearing although they've almost always been uh, I've almost always managed to mitigate them in one form or another but with this I had zero problems whatsoever and that seems to be the norm now with modern window managers, modern desktop environments and um, and I don't think I've had a, a Wayland based uh, distribution which um, has actually given me any kind of screen tearing as well. So let's take a look at the desktop to begin with. So as you can see here this looks significantly different to your standard GNOME offering. They've done some changes here which I have mixed feelings about and I'm going to share those mixed feelings with you today. So as you can see there are icons on the desktop. Icons on the desktop, it is a bit of a step backwards there. And you can't see it as well but they've also, although they're using the newer form of the known desktop which has taken away the use of system tray icons, they actually have brought in, brought back system tray icons. So if you install something like Steam or Dropbox or something like that, you will see the icons up there in the top right hand corner alongside your settings menu. Now this is a, an issue with GNOME. As you can see here it actually comes with, uh, I forget the name of the issue now, Nightlight, there you go. It comes with Nightlight as standard as does the, the, the GNOME desktop, that's not something Ubuntu's put in, that's just part of the GNOME desktop. Really like it. I know it's not much of a stretch to just install Redshift and it's easy enough to set up, but um, the fact that it's built into the desktop environment I really like and, and I hope other desktop environments follow suit. One thing I don't like, however, is that the settings menu is taken up by these four icons. It's not immediately obvious um, that um, these aren't, like, this isn't a system tray, or that, 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 that all of these icons are a, a settings menu. And even though it's been, you know, I've been familiar with the GNOME desktop for quite some time, it's, it's just one of those things that isn't necessarily in, incredibly intuitive to new users or people that might be facing this desktop for the first time. Again, that's a GNOME issue rather than Ubuntu, but Ubuntu could have gone with any of the other desktop offerings possibly even you know KDE or what have you but anyway that aside um, the uh, volume and microphone and, and brightness uh, levels and all this kind of stuff I mean it is a nice comprehensive menu here another thing that isn't necessarily intuitive as you can see Gendry here which is what my user profile is called uh, you have to click on that to click on log out it's not available in the like in the power menu as you can see here that just gives you oh that gives you quite a bit of a scary uh, no I do not want to quit Stop recording. Okay, there you go. But yeah, just by demonstrating um, uh, th that it's not necessarily immediately obvious how to log off. Now, if you're using a laptop with a single user, not really much of an issue, but um, it is sort of worth noting that it, it took it, I do. I mean, it, for the first time that I uh, I use the GNOME desktop, it took me a while to work that out. Uh, another, actually, now that we've got the simple screen recorder already up and, and running, or just a window rather for this particular part, um, one of the things about the new sidebar that they've got, now I kind of like the sidebar, I do like the whole dash to dock thing, but one thing which I found really quite counterintuitive is clicking on the icon of an open window doesn't minimize it again. You actually have to go across to the minimize button there and uh, click minimize if you want to minimize it uh, across to the, uh, the side panel there. Now you can set the side panel to go on the bottom or even on the right hand side if you so wish. But um, yeah, I just found that really, really counterintuitive. And because they've now got the panel here on the left-hand side so that it looks a lot more like Unity, um, you click on, to access your applications, you click on this um, grid matrix icon down here, which is, I guess it's not necessarily obvious um, according to my desktop background wallpaper, but I put that in, so that's... Uh... But again, to open up your, uh, your applications here, I like the fact that they've just given you it as a spread layout there. Um, it, it, it didn't come installed with so many things that it couldn't just give you that. And then you can just go across to your frequent items and that gives you uh, everything that you need there. But if you've got the applications menu down there, 
you've got this activities menu up here that gives you a list of all your open windows and you've got your open windows on the left hand side you've got your desktop down here and you can search for your applications up through here it doesn't seem that there's too much of a particular degree of consistency as to what all of these functions and buttons and panels do. It seems like there is just a lot of crossover. Whereas when you take a desktop environment, for example, LXDE, LXQT, XFCE, or Mate, whatever, it seems that the GNOME and the, uh, it seems that the, um, the user interface and the layout and the panels and everything, uh, the, the overall user experience just seems to have a degree of consistency also again with, with KDE. But with here, if I wanted to view my open windows, well, I've, I've got them already on the panel across the left hand side, but then I can go up to activities as well. Now I do like the spread there, but it just seems that there are a lot of um, buttons and a lot of menus that do, you know, that, that, that don't necessarily have this degree of consistency. That don't that, 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 there's a lot of overlap, and um, and it's not necessarily straightforward. So you might, for example, assume that the activities button uh, would have uh, would would be more of a universal menu as it has been in other GNOME installs. But then you've got this uh, down here, which then takes you to the applications, which is kind of part of the activities menu. I, you know, it, it doesn't, again, it, it's not necessarily that there's anything wrong with it. It's just not that it, it's just not massively intuitive. And it seems to assume a degree of familiarity with the system that a lot of new users won't necessarily face. And this is where I think Pop! OS actually, uh, actually got a step ahead when it came to new users. Now I'm talking specifically about new users. So I would assume that the majority of people watching this video, for example, probably would come under the banner of power users or more advanced users. So Pop! OS isn't really a a, a, uh, an operating system with you guys predominantly in mind but it is defined more about what's taken out and the minimalism of it all whereas Ubuntu they've clearly layered a lot of stuff on top of it and whereas I think this could meet the preferences of a lot of power users uh, I, I think that it seems to be in, in, becoming increasingly clear to me that Ubuntu uh, as is, Ubuntu vanilla 1710, might not necessarily be the best choice for the newer users. And maybe some of the desktop variants might have a little bit more of a traditional user experience that they're more familiar and comfortable with. Um, or Pop! OS, which is a new user experience with a new desktop paradigm, but because it's a lot, because it's a lot more minimal, because there's a lot of stuff there that isn't necessarily... Um, you know, everything on screen or everything ha has a purpose and only that purpose, then it seems that Pop! OS might be able a little bit more welcoming to people who are new to the GNOME desktop environment or new to Linux in general. But again, this is a little bit nitpicky and it just seems that what uh, Ubuntu have done here is that they've taken uh, a desktop environment which has decided to go in a very definite direction and they've tried to sort of steer that direction a little bit, which has ended up with some some odd outcomes, should we say. But it is, of course, important to bear in mind that this is a six monthly release and it's not a long-term support release, which means that in six months time, we'll be seeing a new Ubuntu, which will probably be refined based on the, um, based on, on the experiences and the review of, of, of this one. This is in effect a uh, release candidate beta for what we might see in terms of the next long-term support Ubuntu desktop. So um, it's, um, it's definitely new, and in terms of a new desktop, it's stable. Uh, I have had, I, th I think I've pretty much had zero uh, bugs or errors or anything that's, that's sort of crashed out on me. So that is definitely good. Um, in regard to the App Store, I do actually quite like the App Store. I do like how you can browse the App Store. Um, it does seem, that particular part does seem intuitive. And of course, you've got uh, updates and, uh, and the update process seems uh, pretty reasonable and straightforward as well. However, there is one rather large actually uh, issue with uh, the store that I don't know how happy I am with, and that's that it doesn't give you a, a true distinction between installing a snap package and installing something from the native Ubuntu repositories. And I have had some issues with installing snaps, uh, whereas everything being installed from the Ubuntu native repositories has gone incredibly smoothly. So it would be nice if there was uh, either some... some um, message or what have you or some distinction or if the distinction was made quite clear and i'll give you an example here so if i go to key pass x it gives you two key pass x um, options to install uh, one from the repository and another from uh, snap so um, and in fact the key pass xc 
uh, is also available via Snap as well. So the fact that it doesn't give you uh, a huge distinction or make it incredibly obvious the source of the um, software that you're installing from, I have actually seen, you know, it's given me a little bit of issues uh, regarding that as well. Now, since I usually install from the command line, that's not too much of an issue for me personally. But again, um, if you're not familiar with Snaps, if you're not familiar with um, how the distribution is put together, some users may have issues with this. The file manager is basically files. It's your standard offering for the GNOME desktop. It's pretty good, it's pretty intuitive. They've made a few tweaks to the default layout so the, the icons are a little bit smaller and it's, uh, yeah. But again, it looks nice, um, it looks usable, it works, it does the job. I don't know necessarily what you might expect out of a, uh, a file manager other than the basics. If you want anything more advanced, I tend to go to the command line. The command line here, I believe, is um, the GNOME terminal. But I could be wrong. Yeah, that's the GNOME terminal. I've been using it now for a week or so and uh, and I haven't really questioned it. But yeah, again, you know, got Gendry at Storm's End there. Game of Thrones fans, I hope, would appreciate that. Um, Okay, we'll close. I think I might have just uh, right-clicked there on accident. Um, oh, I've got, yeah, a key pass here. I don't know if I've shown this to you guys. Uh, this is a QT4 application, so it themes correctly across the board there. Haven't come across any problems with that. In fact, actually, um, Simple Screen Recorder, I believe, is themed with either QT4 or QT5, but I've had no theming issues, which is nice. It was something of an issue some while, some while ago with other distributions um, and older distributions where QT and GTK wouldn't necessarily play nicely together. But it does seem that that is predominantly a thing of the past, or at least I hope so. So, and it comes, of course, with Firefox as the standard... Uh, as the standard uh, web browser. So all in all, it doesn't come too loaded with default programs. As you can see here, there's, there's a fair amount of stuff uh, that I've actually loaded on on top. For example, Dropbox, uh, KeyPass, um, Simple Screen Recorder. So there's a lot of stuff, recipes there. No recipes, that's worth uh, playing around with if you're interested in uh, cooking or um, a strange and quirky GTK applications. But uh, yeah, I've had a, a bit of fun with that. Also comes with uh, OBS Studio in the repositories as well. So it does seem like they're moving with the times in regards to software. I do have to say, I do quite like the theming that they've done. There was a lot of people that were worried that the default theme of Ubuntu would be um, would basically just be like a, a vanilla GNOME desktop, but they've managed to keep it consistent with the Ubuntu branding. And it, I, I like that. It does seem like it, it just seems that um, Ubuntu at least are still paying attention to the desktop. I know that a lot of people who were fond of the Ubuntu desktop were rather worried when Canonical were making downsizes um, and, and they looked like they were going to be streamlining their focus, possibly on um, Internet of Things and the server side where they've had the most uh, profitability. And they did make passing references to the desktop, but it does look like that they're paying attention to the desktop in a reasonable way for now. So when it comes to a first attempt at a GNOME desktop as their main focus, it doesn't. It seems pretty good, if I'm completely honest. Some of the UI choices, I think, are a little bit um, counterintuitive for people that might be very new to GNOME and very new to Linux. Um, but again, I could very well be wrong on that one. I'm like the, the last person you should ask. I install and review quite a lot of desktop environments and uh, Linux distributions, and a lot of this stuff comes more intuitive to me. So working out what's counterintuitive or unintuitive is uh, is something that's a little bit out of my ballpark, I guess. I suppose that's something that new users might want to uh, weigh in on. Um, I do have to say, when it comes to the UI, though, many users might feel a little bit more at home with something like Ubuntu Mate, w which is my de facto uh, distribution for installing or recommending to new users or people that want to um, get away from Windows and they've generally been very happy with that as well because it, it depending on how you set up the desktop and you've got various different desktop paradigms that you can actually choose from uh, preset ones um, you can actually end up with a very consistent desktop with something that they might be more used to. Anyway, other desktop environments aside, I will certainly be covering more on this channel throughout the weeks to come. And of course, have already covered uh, the latest beta, or not the latest beta, but one of the betas of Ubuntu Mate, which has changed very little from what I've seen so far. So that's also on this channel if you want to check it out. Ubuntu Mate looks absolutely fabulous. And I did actually do the second alpha of Ubuntu Next, which also looks pretty, uh, pretty good 
code as well. So there are plenty of options. The variants of Ubuntu, the official variants of Ubuntu rather, uh, have a lot going for them. They look incredibly promising. Um, so if the uh, user interface of this uh, vanilla Ubuntu isn't to your uh, liking, then you have plenty of options to choose from. Um, all in all, I gotta say, again, mixed feelings. Um, it certainly was easy enough to install, set up, and get to grips with, but maybe not as easy as, say, Pop OS. I'm not necessarily entirely certain what kind of user this vanilla Ubuntu desktop is necessarily aimed at. It does seem to be a step away from the complete new user territory uh, that Pop OS seems to be moving into. And again, yeah, Pop OS does seem to be um, Ubuntu, but with a lot of the, uh, the fluff cut away. And this may be sort of targeted towards maybe the power user market, the, the developer market, um, people that want to step away from Windows and move more into the tech field in a more serious capacity kind of market. Um, I'm not entirely certain, and maybe they're not at this stage as well. Maybe they're putting out something that has a lot of scope and um, hoping to see where their demographics shift towards. Uh, nevertheless, um, like I say, it does everything that I need it to do, and a lot of my issues, I guess, with the UI are issues with GNOME in general, I, I gotta say that although I think GNOME have made some brave decisions that have paid off for them or that certainly make things more user friendly and challenge the traditional uh, desktop paradigms of Linux, uh, Linux desktops, um, I also feel that they might have cut back rather a bit more than they should have, especially in regards to them getting rid of support for the system tray, which I don't know, I think they, they feel that they can get developers to work around them on that one, but. Um, I don't know, that might be a little bit of hubris of on their part. Anyhow, uh, let me know how you've been getting on with it. I'm sure many of you guys have at least fired it up in a virtual machine or tried it on a desktop yourselves. I'd love to hear your guys' experiences because I feel that mine is, is particularly narrow uh, in terms of scope and perspective on this particular distribution. But thanks, guys, very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.